Hello. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do an oil change in a 2015 Volvo S60 T5 Premier Drive E. Yeah, it's an awful big mouthful to say. What the heck does that mean exactly? This is one of the new Volvos where they, in uh, previous years, they have had that two and a half liter five cylinder engine that was just bulletproof the uh, new models basically they chopped one of the cylinders off made it into, into a four cylinder work some additional magic on it um, we now have a two liter four cylinder that gets better gas mileage and has more horsepower than the old series of um, five cylinders um, but Volvo has gone the way of some other car manufacturers in deciding that people don't really work on their cars a lot these days most people can look under the hood and see that big plastic cover. I know I'm, I'm being a generalist there, but a lot of people these days look under the hood, see that big plastic cover and think, oh, that's a nice looking engine. No, it's just a big plastic cover. The engine's below it. And they don't really understand what any of the stuff is, uh, other than maybe windshield wiper fluid or something like that. So Volvo has removed pretty much everything from under here except a blue cap for the windshield wiper fluid. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is uh, what it looks like under the hood of the new Volvos. You've got your oil fill cap, which is black and set back so that it doesn't really stick out. You don't have a whole lot that sticks out. Even your um, fill cap for your overflow for your radiator um, is, is, you know, it's black with just this one little label on it. Um, everything else is kind of hidden except for that one thing that has a big old symbol on it for the windshield wipers. Pretty obvious for somebody that doesn't really do a lot of, with cars. But one thing, for those that are paying attention, you do not see a dipstick for the oil you can't check your oil on these things in these cars from under the hood this is all done electronically so I guess that does make it a little easier for some people um, because they don't want to have to deal with that stuff anyway that's what oil change places or the dealerships are for um, but there are do-it-yourself guys like me where you know this car wants a 5W30 extended life full synthetic oil. They recommend a Castrol uh, uh, full synthetic oil on this one. Um, but I don't want to pay a hundred bucks at a dealership or someplace to get an oil change on this when I can do it myself. I bought the oil myself for uh, 30, 35 bucks uh, for the big jug plus one extra quart. Uh, and the filter online, I got a Volvo factory filter for like $13, $14, so it, it is still expensive because I'm getting the higher end oils, but these don't need the oil changes but every 10,000 miles. Now, I will probably change it more often than that. I just don't like the idea of going longer than 10,000 or as uh, up to 10,000 miles on an oil change, but hey. If you're like me and you want to change your oil in this, let's get to it. I'm going to show you how. First thing you want to do, put on some clothes. You don't mind getting dirty. Get the car on a level surface and put on the e-brake. Um, this doesn't have the handle that you pull. It has an e-brake. Let's show you. Okay, so we are inside the car. And if you look here to the left of the steering wheel, there's this little thing that says P. Just pull up on it. Or maybe you push in. Oh, yeah, sorry. Push in. And notice there, it says park. And you can hear the e-brake engage. So now, the brake is electronically engaged. And you cannot move the rear wheels. Now, I'm going to put the key in here. I don't know if it has to be in there. I've just always done that. I do not have my foot on the gas. We're, we're beyond the e-brake. I'm going to show you how to check the oil. Hold down the start button until your radio comes on. Then go over here, and you want to scroll. Oh, might want to hit OK, and it comes up to oil level. 
hit OK again and it shows me my oil level. That's how you check it. So you put your key in, press start until your um, radio comes on and then press OK and then scroll over to the uh, oil, oil level. So anyway, now I want to jack the car up in the air a little bit on one side so that I can get underneath it a little better. Okay, I have the car up in the air in a light position so that I can uh, see up under it and my oil drain pan ready. Uh, I do not have my tools out yet. I'm going to need a 17 millimeter uh, wrench for the drain plug. Um, I do need an oil filter wrench as well, a special one for this. Uh, and I do have two jacks under there. You can use a jack or a jack stand uh, in combination. I just happen to have two jacks. I don't like to have one device only under a car. When I'm under it, I like to have two devices. So if one fails, I have a backup. So let me get the other tools ready and we'll proceed. The first thing we're going to have to do is up under here, I'll show you a quick peek. We have an air dam. See like a skid plate or air dam. And we're going to have to remove that because we can't get to anything underneath it while that's there. And I think that uses Torx on this model. Well, let me get my tools out and get up under here and we'll find out. Okay, we're under the car. And this is Torx. There are these all over the place here. Um, there's one other one over there. I think there's like eight of them. One back there. One back there, one back there, somewhere, one there, and these are T30. So all you have to do is just remove those and then drop the plate down out of the way, and then you can get to everything below, or uh, whichever way. <laughs> Let's get that off though. Okay, there were indeed eight of those don't need anything fancy most of the time all you need is something like this it doesn't need those things aren't in there super tight they're just in good enough to hold it and there is the air dam front end here back in there that's the way it slides into the car and you see the little vents under there where it allows for cooling uh, it helps control the flow of air through that engine for more efficient cooling uh, it also helps it heat up more in the winter, and the skid plate protects it from other kinds of gook that you don't want under there. So next we need to uh, get up under it, position this sucker in place. Do not forget to remove your plug and open your vent hole, and we'll get up under. You're going to need one of these two. Um, I forget what size this is. You can look it up online. If I can remember, I'll post it out there. This should be the same filter size that is used with the old Volvos, if I remember correctly. Let's find out. It has a 3H drive, so you can just put it on a regular old um, 3H ratchet and uh, use that to remove the filter. The filter is a canister style where you keep the canister and just replace the filter element inside. So. Let's first get this under there and get the oil drained. Okay, we are under the car now. Here's the oil pan. This is the oil drain plug in the back. It is indeed a 17 millimeter. This is the oil filter canister, which has a unique feature. If you take a look at that little dot on the end, this is a T40, fits right up inside there. This is a drain plug for your oil filter canister um, that you can drain the oil out of the canister before removing it. And the removal tool for the old uh, Volvo series still works on this. So if you have one of those, you don't have to buy a new one. Let's go ahead and break that loose. Get this positioned under here and see if we can do this without getting ourselves splattered with oil. Sorry about this. I'm going to get oil all over myself anyway. I always do. But there we go. Now, off of this, I do have, if you see it here in my finger, a crush ring. The factory Volvo kit 
comes with a new crush ring. So I'm gonna continue draining this oil out and then I'll get back to you in just a second because this is a hard position to hold. Okay, my oil is draining out and looking good. It's just a trickle right now. I'm gonna give it time to completely drain out. Don't wanna get impatient or anything. But here's my factory kit right here. Uh, 509453, I don't know if that's the part number or not, but no, 31372212, that is the factory um, number that you're going to look for. Check this out, there's your new crush ring right on top of the kit, and inside you've got your oil filter element, and you've got a new ring for your um, canister, and you also have a new O-ring for the drain plug itself. So the factory Volvo kit, not only will it maintain your warranty if it's still under warranty, it's not expensive. I mean, compared with all that you get, I think it's a pretty good deal. So I still got a couple of minutes left on draining this out, so we'll give it a minute. And uh, then we're gonna drain the uh, canister. Uh, before I drain the canister, I'm gonna put the um, oil plug drain or oil drain you know what I'm saying the drain plug back in for the oil pan and the new crush ring okay we have our drain plug back in and I'm getting ready to drain this I've never actually done this on this car this is the first time I've changed the oil I just got this car it's used I don't know how many miles are on the oil change so I want to make sure I am in control of that There we go. And you're not going to have a massive amount come out of there, but it does help. So I'll let that drain. I'm going to replace the O-ring on this. And then when this is finished draining, I'll put this back in there and I'll pull the cap off. I'll wipe all the oil drips off and put this back on. Now one thing to mind, uh, keep in mind when you're replacing this O-ring is you don't want to scratch the surface of this uh, sorry about that repositioning things a little bit of this uh, here because then that could you know pretty much make the o-ring worthless you just want to kind of take it and push this toward one side and it's hard to see but see how it bubbles up there and that'll give you something to grab onto you might just need a little paper clip or something to slip under there and pull that off nothing fancy it's real nice and easy. And then you can pop the new O-ring on real uh, simply. Okay, now we're back up under here. I got my um, drain plug back on. I got this. I might need to get a uh, extension. Oh, there it goes. Let's see, I might need to get me an extension because I'm right on the edge here. But that's coming off, okay. I've got one of these Chinese wrenches too. It doesn't fit on there as tightly as it ought to, so. And you see, there's still going to be a lot of oil that comes out of this thing, even after draining it. So, let me get that drained and hang on just a second. Okay, don't know that I'm going to be able to do this one-handed, but here's what the filter and cartridge looks like. Now, if you look at the new one, here's this end. It has these little tabs here. This end has little clips that's going to make it clip into place. That just pulls right out. But like I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it one-handed, so let me pull. Ugh, it's in there pretty good. Hang on a sec, let me use two hands. Okay, two hands. I got the old one out. There it is. Just like the new one. Make sure they are a match. And I'm just going to take the new one, see down in there, and just... Pop it back into place. You'll hear it snap into place. It spins freely, but that just helps hold it into place when it clicks. Let's take this one, throw it in the garbage can, and clean up my mess here. Now, this has an O-ring here that I've got to replace as well. And same thing, if you pinch on one spot on it, 
and just run your fingers around this thing. See how it bumps up right there? And then all you got to do is get your finger under it and start pulling it up. See, I can do this one-handed. One-handed, look at this. I might have done that before while I had to filter out. <laughs> might have been a better idea. But see, I was able to remove that oil ring with or O-ring with one hand by just taking and pinching on one spot, running my fingers around, and it makes it bulge up like that, and then just take it and peel it off. Put the other one back on carefully. Slide it easily as you can over these because they are kind of sharp and they will you know, put a nick in it if you're not careful and slot it right back into the groove here and then it's ready to pop back in. That's all there is to it. So let me get that taken care of. I know I'm going to need two hands for that to do it properly without, you know, destroying the uh, oil ring and uh, I'll get back right to you. Okay, got the O ring back on. It looks good. Filter element is in place. So I need to get back up under the car. And I might want to take a paper towel and wipe up some of my mess real quick from that oil that drips down. And then just pop this right back up into place. And start spinning it on, making sure it is not cross-threaded. Not always as easy as it seems. There's it goes. You gotta push a little bit to get it started, but once it's started, that's what we need. Move that out of the way. This time I did get an extension. Got it smart the second time around. And we're just gonna tighten this back down until it stops. And it'll bump up against the other, you know, it's stop. And it is in. That's all that there is to it. Now, at this point, I need to uh, put some oil in it, put the air dam back on it, and start it and make sure it runs. Uh, it has the right amount of oil in it. Okay, as you can tell, I'm all sweaty and everything. It's uh, pretty hot here. We are ready to put the oil back in. I have put the air dam back on, double checked, make sure everything was tight. Um, and I take, have taken the car off the jacks to make sure it is level. I'm going to be putting back in Castrol Edge 5W30 Extended Performance Full Synthetic. Um, this does recommend Castrol Edge. You know, every manufacturer has the certain oils that they do recommend. Uh, and since this is still in warranty and this is the first oil change I am doing for this, I want to make sure I know what oil is in it and I'm going to use what the manufacturer recommends. Uh, so, I have my oil fill cap off, and I have my, uh, it's hard to get off. That last little bit just doesn't want to come off. So, anyway, I'm going to take this off, I'm going to start filling that up. Okay, as I'm doing this, I want to make sure I don't have the oil come all the way up in the tube here. Just take your time and pour slowly. Uh, in the funnel, pull, it wasn't. You don't want to have it run all the way up in the funnel. It just means you're pouring too quickly. Um, for this car, I just double checked. The capacity is 5.7 liters of oil. Now you know every teeny tiny little bit isn't going to drain out. There's going to be about a quarter of a quart probably left in here that doesn't want to drain out. So I'm going to go back in, this is 5 liters exactly, pour that in, and then I'm going to put about a half a liter, maybe just a little bit less, from another bottle in there. And then we're going to run it for a couple of minutes, and then we'll check the oil level. Okay, I ran the car for about a minute, and then let it sit, and I even made myself a little label. I recorded this in my Volvo manual, since this is still under warranty. And I've got my next oil change set to just a little over 7,000 miles out. Uh, it's like 7,101. I, I prefer just myself because I live in Michigan and know the winters can be harsh to change the oil a little bit more often. So 
So we're going to put the key in. Hold the start button until the radio comes on. Let's turn the radio down. And we're going to hit OK. Oh, there we go, oil level. And we are in the green. We do not want to overfill it. Uh, if you see it up in that max, you need to drain a little bit out. Uh, you do not want that. So I think we are running this. I feel comfortable. And uh, now we're good. Now the next thing is to reset the service life on this. If um, I get out, see, if I go to my service status, it says to service 8 months or 55,000 miles. So there is a way to reset that. I'm going to turn this off, take the key out. Okay, let me close my door here. Got all my doors and the hood closed. Let's see if this reset procedure works. We've tried a couple and none of them have worked so far. Put your fob in, press OK to toggle to service status, press and hold reset, and then OK. Press and release start, press and hold start until button starts to flash in my display here there it goes and then let go now I want to get out of the car and wait about three minutes okay so I've waited a couple of minutes let's pop this back in push and hold that button We got the radio on, hit OK, you can start scrolling through stuff. Service status, 12 months or 10,000 miles. So that did get my service life reset. If I, <laughs> there you go. And if I hit OK and go to my oil level, my oil level still shows good. So we have successfully changed the oil in a 2015 Volvo S60 T5 Premier Drive E engine. Hope you got something out of this. It was fun making this video. This is my first oil change for this. I know there's a lot more to it than in a typical oil change. Um, that Drive E engine is just, uh, it's a different uh, critter. When they change the um, way you have to acknowledge that you've done a good job basically you can't go in and check with a dipstick to see what the oil looks like you can't go in to see what the level is you have to use these electronic methods and all that so it does um change things up a little bit and i know it's very confusing for a lot of people it was confusing for me when i first started looking at this that's why i wanted to put out a video to go through the steps from beginning to end. This is my first time doing this, and if I can go through and do this, you can. So I hope you got something out of this, and I'll uh, talk to you guys later. Enjoy your Volvo.